chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. I want to speak this morning. We receive and part your word, child, and impart it, child, with wisdom and understanding. And we bless you for that, Holy Spirit. And we welcome you to do that in Jesus' name. Told that Jesus had told his disciples, and I think that because our world is so materialistic and we have, sometimes we are materialistic, we misunderstand what the Lord says in this passage. And he's talking about the kingdom of God. So he has called his disciples to himself and he began to teach them because they asked him, they inquired of him, Lord, what will happen when the end comes? So what the Lord is doing is he is beginning to teach them. And he's beginning to show them things not only about the kingdom of God, but about the kingdom of God that should be in within us. The Bible says that Jesus said that the kingdom of God is within us, among us, and around us. So because he had called his disciples to him, they had received him as master, he had imparted to them the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God that he had imparted to them was the kingdom of God that was on the inside of him that gave them authority to do what he told them to do. It not only gave them authority, but it gave them the ability to do what he had called them to do. So the kingdom of God, he was referring to the kingdom of God, the government of God, and the kingdom of God that is within us. So I want to talk this morning about our relationship with God and that our relationship is based on or our faith is based on our relationship with God because we have a desire to seek more faith. Lord, I need more faith to do what you call me to do. Well, God is not going to give us any more faith than we already have. We know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, what is that faith? It's the faith that Jesus has already placed in us. So here, let's go and let's talk uh, and, and let the Holy Spirit teach us something here. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 14, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. In some translation, I'm reading from the Amplified. He said, for it is like a man who has, it, was like, it is like a man who was, about to take a long journey and he called his servants together and entrusted them with his property. To one, he gave five talents, probably about $5,000 to one, to another, two, to another one, to each in proportion to his own personal ability. Now you want to mark that in your Bible. To each in proportion to his own personal ability. Then he departed and he left the country. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them and he gained five talents more. And likewise, he who had received the two talents, he also gained two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled and settled his account with them. And he who had received five talents came and brought him five more, saying, Master, you entrusted me, you entrusted to me five talents. See here, I have gained five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, you upright, honorable, and admirable and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of much. Enter in to and share the joy with your master rejoice and joy. And he also, who had the two talents, came forward and said, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. Here I am, here I have gained two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, you upright, honorable, and admirable, and a faithful servant. 
If you have been faithful and trustworthy over a little, I will put you in charge of much, enter into and share the joy which your master enjoys. He who had received one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a harsh and a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not want winnow the grain. So I was afraid, so I was afraid, so I was afraid. And I went and I hid your talents in the ground. Here you have what is your own. But the master answered him, you wicked and lazy and idle servant. Did you indeed know that I reap where I had not sown and gathered grain where I did not whiner? Then you, sh then you should have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received what was my own interest. So take the talents away from him and give it to one who has the ten talents. For to everyone who is, for everyone who has will more be given, and he will be furnished richly, so that he will have in an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even that what he does have will be taken away. Even that which he does have will be taken away. Now, let us let the Holy Spirit teach us here. Because first we need to understand that the Lord is talking about the kingdom of God. Now the kingdom of God, he has said that the kingdom of God is in you. So some of us, sometimes we, we, we must remember that there's more than one shade of revelation to a scripture or a, a, a passage of scripture. So if we understand that, we can understand what Jesus is saying here. So he says here, to, he said in verse 14 that for it is like a man. It what? It the kingdom of God. It the kingdom of God is like a man who was about to take a long journey. Well, we know that they're talking about Jesus Christ. And he called his servants. So Jesus called us, call us. This is what the Bible tells us. In John chapter 16, no one comes to God except he calls them. So he called, he called his servants together and he entrusted them with his property. My question would be, what is this property? Now, someone has said, well, this property is a talent. But he said that I liken it. He didn't say it was a talent. He said, I liken it too. I'm comparing it with, for your understanding. I'm going to give you an illustration so that you can relate back to what I'm actually talking about. So when we say that he gave them ten, uh, five talents or $5,000, he's not actually saying that he offered, that he gave these guys $5,000. He said, I'm liking the kingdom of God like these talents. And I'm liking the servants of God that are in the kingdom of God and that the kingdom of God is in them like unto what I've entrusted them with, the talents. So we have to understand that. It's foundational. So then he goes on to say, he said, to one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one. Now this we should note, to each in proportion to his own personal ability. To each in proportion to his own personal ability. Now one translation says, praise the Lord. He says, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two talents, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability. Now that word there, it means, it's, it's, the, it's the Greek word, idios. Idios, I-D-I-O-S, idios. Now that word idios, it means to give. 
It means to set aside. It means to deliver up or over up the powers of someone else. So, we got to look at this. So, what Jesus did, he delivered up certain powers. He delivered up certain abilities to his servants. He delivered up to, to whatever according to what he had foreordained that he had the capacity to deal with. So to one, he gave a degree of ability, which was, let's say, five degrees. And to another, he gave a degree of abilities, which was two degrees. And to another, he gave one, a degree, which was one degree. Now we're looking at God, and we're looking at the, develop, the ability of God based on the ability that he has given to these guys, to his servants. We're not looking at their ability. We're looking at his ability that he has created it to them because that he had already called them to himself and given them ability and given them a, a, a com capacity to receive the ability that he would impart to them. Now let me say that again so we get this. The Lord had called them to himself. He had empowered his disciples. He says in, in Matthew uh, chapter 10, he said he summoned his disciples to himself. And he gave them power to drive out devils, to heal people, to, to uh, deliver people from unclean spirits. And then in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, and I will read that. He called his disciples and he bring them to himself and he imparts something to them. He imparts, he imparts, he imparts. So in Luke chapter 19, he said, Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample upon the serpents and the scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability and ability over all the powers of the enemy, over all the powers of the, that the enemy possess, and nothing shall in any way hurt you or harm you. Now, we sometimes, especially if we over into the deliverance ministry, or over into the, you know, we get into the power thing, and we overlook an aspect of what Jesus did. He gave them ability he gave them the ability to do something. And he gave them the ability based on their uniqueness and how they were made up in their own personality. So why am I saying this? Because sometimes we have or we allow a spirit of inadequacy to come up on us and we would say, well, I can't do this. I do not have the ability to do this. I can't see myself doing that. But we have been called aside to Jesus. And with that calling aside, he has imparted into us divine ability. Where when he asks us or instruct us or entrust us to do something, we have this ability that he has imparted into us to get it done. That's an awesome truth. If we can lay hold of it. If we can lay hold of it. And we must lay hold of it. Because as we go along, we will see that whatever God gives us, there is a responsibility that comes with it. And wherever there is a responsibility, there is a consequence. So we go on. Now, this word, and I want to go here, and I want to explain something here. This word entrusted, it means to deliver. It, it, it means here, it means that, it, it means that this is, this is something.
something where God has handed over to them. He has handed over some property. Now, what is this property? This is what we need to find out. What is this property? If we go through this, this parable, this whole uh, discourse, what Jesus is talking about, he's talking about faith. He mentioned the word faith four times. He mentioned the word trust and trustworthy. Uh, uh, you know, they, they are, you can say trust, but trustworthy, or faith, but faithful. It's the same word. It's from the same base. So he used this word at least nine times in this discourse. So his whole um, 